they should destabilize the country. This is all in mainline history, but not mm -hmm. popularly taught. And he said, no way, I'll just start issuing our own money again. And so as soon as the war ended, they killed him over that again. So that's why it's called the Lincoln Greenback, because that was the last time it's since happened. Andrew Jackson that mm -hmm. money had been issued. So he didn't have to go get a law passed. Kennedy can say, well, as president, I can reissue any currency that's already been out there. Mm. And that got him killed. But I don't want to sit here and give a history lesson. But no, that's good, because it'll probably end up in a song. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> wow. Pick of the week by the Dallas Observer uh, for all the concerts going on in Dallas, uh, and it's uh, Justin's pick of the week. And he says, "Megadeth, who recently put out their masterwork with Endgame, a relentless assault on corruption, FDIC, the, the banks, military occupations, and the mind scramble of today's world gone insane." With Dave Mustaine's articulate and spiteful delivery and blistering spiteful. guitar work, <laughs> maybe you need to be spiteful. Yeah, I guess. Uh, on the other. And, and it just goes on from there. I mean, is that an accurate kind of snapshot of the album? I, I, I don't agree with the spiteful part, but yeah, I think so. I think so. I, it's certainly about the topics, you know, you can, but I think any 10-year-old any can read the lyrics and say that's what this is all about. And it, it's much more deeper than that. Each one of those songs is, uh, it, it is about those things, but it's so much more deeper. It's not like me just sitting on the fence and casting aspersions. It's really getting into the game and saying, this is what it feels like to take a hit. You know what I mean? Um, I know from firsthand with being involved in, in the money business, when I went to school to be a stockbroker, there's, there's, you know, there, there's things that... I learned about money that you know they just don't teach people, and they want to keep people stupid. So you know, I, I had that song, um, uh, "The Right to Go Insane," and um, that song, um, there's it, it. Those lyrics are actually toned down because I went naming people's names and all kinds of stuff like that in the first version of it. So wow. that demo tape, if it ever gets circulated, it'll probably make a lot of people piss. figure the songs out while we're here. Um, when we, we do something like this, we get the song in pieces. Like, this is the rhythm track. I have to learn it again, because I, last time I played it was in the studio. And then, get like the solos. That's what the solo sounds like, soloed out. Another solo. No Chris solo there. Here's another one. And you, just loop it. you just keep going back and forth over it until you figure it out. So, and then the whole thing sounds like this. right now we're sitting on some of the uh, we definitely are on the quintessential lineup and, and I think that my songwriting hasn't even been tapped yet because of what just happened with our new guitar player Chris coming in Chris is a, a genius and he's an unrealized talent and it's real easy because you know if you go over and you scratch him he kind of like bleeds music and, and so that was really cool for me we had a ballad on the record called The Hardest Part of Letting Go I wrote about me and my wife Pam she hates the song consequently because <laughs> the second half <laughs> is about Edgar Allan Poe you know uh, the Casco Monteado where he takes uh uh, what's the guy's name? Fortunato down into the cellars and he bricks him into the wall. He's mirroring him into the wall. I put that in the lyric and my wife thinks I want to brick her into a wall somewhere. So she didn't <laughs> like the song. But, um, you know, we wrote that and, and Chris actually contributed on that. And it went from being a, a good song to being something that was really a masterpiece. And um, I don't say that because I was involved in it. I say that because the song really is that way. I used to listen to it. I would get really emotional because of what it meant for me with my, my finding my soulmate. And... and um, and as soon as she said she didn't like it, I couldn't stand hearing it anymore. So uh, I 
gotten over that, and I like listening to it again. But you know, to know that we have this potential as a guitar team, and that we can uh, get into some really mind-blowing stuff. Because when Chris came in, you know, a lot of the stuff was already written. We haven't had a chance to really explore what all his talents are yet. <laughs> Cover. Yeah, um, it's it, well. Obviously, those are the FEMA coffins that everybody's talking about being in the Midwest, and and I haven't seen them myself, but um, you know I've seen the pictures, and and um, you know we had this symbology that was like the uh, Hebrews being marched through the Red Sea, and uh, all the people that are in the Homeland Security jumpsuits with the uh, barcode on their head. You know, it doesn't say in the Bible if the barcode's going to be going this way or if it's going to be going this way. So I figured, you know, we would do something kind of like some cool imagery stuff, you know. That way the satellites can see it from on top. Maybe, yeah, perhaps. Um, but uh, I, I thought about that. How, how can we make this kind of look cool? We'll make it look like a mohawk, but then when you zoom in on it, it's actually their barcode. And um, we uh, put around the surrounding parts of it because, you know, I was, I was really, when I got saved, I really wanted to know what I was doing. You know, I didn't want to just blindly say, okay, I'm a Christian. Uh, what do I do? Okay, 10%. Okay, good. See you later, you know whatever. So I actually really read uh, a lot of the Bible and, and stuff and one of the things that I noticed was in the story back um, with the Egyptians and stuff that out of all the plagues that happened one of them was with the flies and the flies got on everybody except for the Hebrews and um, it was just really insane to see that the chosen people had been left out of this really vile plague that had happened and and it was just one one thing that just kind of went around the outside of the picture so in the top of it there's kind of like a stargate kind of sunburst there where people are going off to this light that they're being let off like come to the light and in uh, was the poltergeist movie it's really a bug zap all right we're going to come back and finish up with the interview it'll take two segments to finish it and we've got even more footage uh, we, we hung out with Dave for like four hours i showed up said hi wanted to do the interview Wanted to get out of his hair. And he's like, no, hang out, stay. We're going to rehearse. And so they sat there and played for two hours. And then said, hey, stay, film the concert. And I was like, yeah, I want to stay, but I got to drive back to Austin. So we got back at 3 a.m. from Dallas. But um, to see Dave Mustaine really growing, really waking up to the New World Order, he's going to be a powerful force in waking people up. We're very excited. We'll be right back. Studies have shown that many people do not get the proper vitamins and minerals necessary to maintain good health. With so many places to choose from, deciding where and what to buy can be a lengthy, frustrating process. The answer is simple. PureBulk.com PureBulk.com has over 150 bulk wholesale nutritional products in stock, including vitamins, super antioxidants, amino acids, and herbal extracts. PureBulk.com's products contain no fillers, no additives, no fancy retail packaging, and no minimum purchase, allowing you to save 50 to 90 percent over store-bought supplements purebulk.com carries atomic iodine red wine extract ginkgo biloba oil of oregano natural coffee caffeine l-arginine resveratrol hyaluronic acid creatine curcumin pine bark extract grape seed extract and more for prices additional products and more information visit purebulk.com that's purebulk.com or call 406-251-3270 that's 406-251-3270 today Hey everybody, Alex Jones here. If you're looking for the perfect Christmas gift, listen up. This will make your holiday shopping very easy. This year, give a seed bank from one of our oldest sponsors, Solutions from Science, to your friends and family. Here's why. The Survival Seed Bank will give any friend or loved one the ability to grow a full acre crisis garden of nutritionally dense, life-sustaining food. And the Survival Seed Bank is not just a box of open-pollinated seeds. It's an indestructible, waterproof seed bank that can even be buried if we face a real meltdown. And here's the best part. All the seeds in the Survival Seed Bank 
go through strict germination testing so you can be confident you're not buying.